Hi, my name is Alan. In the last video, we looked at how to use API keys to access location services. In this video, I want to introduce location services and the developer resources that you can use to start developing applications quickly. So the fastest way to get started is to go to the Mapping API and Services Guide. In this guide, you'll find helpful resources such as the Getting Started page. There are a number of tutorials that you can access for both web and native APIs, including open source APIs as well. You can also learn more about the RTS platform. Here's a list of the location services. And in the API section is a list of the APIs and SDK documentation that you can access to learn more about using the APIs to access the services. So let's get started. If we're gonna build a mapping or a visual application, such as a 2D application or a 3D application, then you'll likely want to use base map layer. A base map layer provides the overall visual context for your map or scene, and it typically con contains like geographic features for the world extent. So base map layers are driven by the base map layer service. So there are a number of styles you can choose from, such as imagery, topographic, streets, or navigation if you're building a navigation application. So if we scroll down to the examples, we'll see there are different styles to choose from. In the code picker, we can actually select the language that we want to use to access the base map layer service. So here's an example of the JavaScript API using Esri Leaflet, or using Mapbox, JLGS, or even one of the native languages, including iOS. So the base map layers are driven by the base map layer service. So to learn more about the service, you can go to the base map layer service page. This provides a URL to the endpoint, which includes all of the key parameters, such as the base map style, the type, and how the access token should be provided. And you can find all of the enums down below as well. So you can use this page to plug that information into your application to build visual applications using the base map layer service. Next, let's look at data hosting. So data hosting is the process of storing and managing, and even accessing your data in the RTS platform cloud. There are three different types of services that you can create. And to access those services, you typically use layers. So for example, if you want to host feature data, which includes a geometry and attributes, then you can use a feature layer to access the feature service in the background. Or you can use a vector tile layer to access vector tile data hosted in the RTS platform and the same with image tiles layers. So to learn more about the services, you can go to each service page, such as the feature service. And if you go down to the feature service URL, you'll find a template here because these services are actually created on the fly. So the URL is unique to your data and to the server it's being hosted by. So data hosting and the data hosting services are very powerful because they allow you to host your data in the cloud. You can control permission settings on them from private access to public access. And they also allow you to make uh, very effective and fast queries against the data so you can make very performant applications. Next, let's look at geocoding. So geocoding is the process of searching for an address or finding places. So let's say you're going to build an application to search for an address or find places. Then in that case, you'll use the geocoding service. With the geocoding service, you can perform different types of operations. For example, you can type in an address, and from an address, you can find a location on the map. Or you can perform a place search to look for points of interest or different places. For example, you can find coffee shops, gas stations, food or restaurants and so forth for a particular location. Typically, you pass in a point or an area to search in and then you find information and points within that location that are different places. Another type of operation that you could perform with the geocoding service is reverse geocoding where you provide a point, so I'm just clicking on the map, and the geocoding service is reverse geocoding that point and finding the closest address to it. For more information about the service, you can go to the geocoding service page, down to the service URL. This will give you the base URL. And from there, you can start 
learning about the key parameters that you would pass in to format your data to either find the point for an address or different places around a given point. So that is using search and the geocoding service. Next, let's look at routing. So if you want to find routes and direction, then you're going to want to use the routing service. So there are many types of routing, but one of the most simple to start with is point-to-point -point routing, where you pass in two locations and the routing service will find the turn-by-turn -turn directions for you. Another type of operation you can perform with the routing service is fleet routing. And in this case, the scenario is you have multiple vehicles that need to visit multiple destinations and drop off parcels or some sort of delivery item. And so to, to do so, you want to use the fleet routing operation. This is also known as vehicle routing problem or VRP. Another operation you can perform with the routing service is finding the closest facility. So in this case, you can find the closest facility based on travel time or distance given one or more facilities that are in an area. So in this case, we're just finding the closest gas station to our click point. Another operation is finding service areas. So these are also known as isochrones, which are basically polygons that represent the distance that you can reach or travel when walking or driving on a street network. So here's an example of 5, 10, and 15 minute drive times. And if we switch that to walking times, you can see that the area is much smaller. But this is giving us an idea of how far we can reach. This is a very, very handy operation for solving distance operations. So there are a number of other operations that you can also perform with the routing service. I encourage you to go to the routing service page and take a look at how to use the routing service to perform these operations and how to find the URL and the parameters to pass in. Next is the geo-enrichment service. So if you're interested in finding demographic data or local facts about an area or a location in the world, then you can use this service to extract and find that data. So we can take a look at geo-enrichment. And in this case, when I click on the map, it's just doing a one mile search and it's looking for population and average household size just for that point from a one mile radius search from the point that I'm clicking on. You can get more specific local facts as well. In this case, I'm looking for median household income, average household income per capita, and aggregated income for a particular location, uh, in this case in New York. So that's just a few examples of the data that you can find with the geo-enrichment service and extract, and there are literally thousands of variables that you can use to find different information about different places around the world. To learn more about the geo-enrichment service, I encourage you to go to the service page. You can find the URL and then start to explore the parameters and how to extract the data from the service. Another service that is handy to use if you want to build applications that run offline is the offline packaging service. This service is typically run using tools, so you can use desktop or online tools to manage your data set and basically create a package of data that you can take offline with your phone, tablet, or laptop application. So this is using the RTIS Runtime API technology, so I encourage you to look at that if you want to learn more. So the last service we're going to look at is the RTIS Platform Portal Service. This service allows you to store, manage, and access content in the cloud. And when we refer to content, we're referring to things like maps, layers, styles, notebooks, uh, Word documents. There are many, many different types. Each type is known as an item. So in the item page, it provides an overview of the process of storing items in the RTS platform. You can either use tools or you can create items and manage items programmatically. So I encourage you to look at the examples here to get an idea of how to do so. For more information about the portal service, you can go to the portal service page, find the URL, and then look at the key parameters that you can pass in to either store, retrieve, access, or change data that is hosted in the RTS platform. So I just want to finish at the API section. There is one API that's really important, and that is the REST API. So the REST API is the actual service endpoint documentation that you can find. So if you go to the REST API under location-based services, then you'll find 
all of the different parameters that are supported for the operations for each service. So this is a much more lower level or detailed set of documentation compared to the guide. And if you're looking for that lower level information, then that's where you can find it. So that's your introduction to location services and resources. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much.